So in less than six months in the WWE, this man has gone from new kid on the block to a contender for the Cruiserweight Championship. Now, you might have heard him referred to as the 21st century success story. And looking at the track record, it's pretty hard to argue with that title. So please welcome my guest, Grayson Wallet. Man, how you going? And uh, thanks for joining us on SEN. My pleasure. I'm, I can't complain. I can leave the house, you know, which is a real treat for me. So I'm not going to I'm not going to say anything negative right now. I'm living the dream right now. Yeah, you are 100% living the dream, not just uh, in the leaving the house stakes. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but man, at the start of 2021, you were back home in New South Wales. You were doing your thing on the Aussie scene. Literally two weeks ago, you're in the ring going blow for blow with Roderick Strong a guy who's been an NXT North American champion, an NXT tag team champion, a ring of honor champion. He's held so much gold uh, throughout his career. I mean, that's a pretty hellacious journey for you, isn't it? It's, it's, it's very surreal still. Like if I could have said this was going to happen six months ago, I probably wouldn't have believed it. Uh, but now that's happening, I'm, I'm loving it. And Roderick Strong, especially is someone that I've watched for so long, you know, especially back in Ring of Honor and all those type of times. So to get in there and kind of test myself against him to see, you know, where I'm at and, and find out that I'm right there at the top uh, was really, really cool last week. So I want to head into the weeds just a little bit because a lot of uh, NXT and WWE fans uh, might see you as this fresh new kid on the block. But uh, for us Aussies, we know that you've been on the scene and your um, history outside of the ring as well because you're a contestant on Australian Survivor in the champions versus contenders edition a couple of years back. And you weren't exactly uh, keeping in your shell for those 20 odd days that you were there, man. So when you do something like that, does it make, I don't know, uh, does it give you a bit of a no fear attitude when you do something like jump to the WWE? I think it's, there's a lot more connection between reality TV and survivor and wrestling than people kind of guess, you know, I feel completely comfortable in front of a camera. I, I lived an entire month with cameras in my face 24 seven. So now I, I kind of just know how it is. And now I don't even see the cameras, you know, when I'm out there, I'm just doing what I do and I feel very comfortable and I, I enjoy it. Like I love being on camera. I love people watching me as you probably have seen. I make the most of every opportunity I have on camera. So I think being on survivor and, and, and living that type of life kind of set me up for what's happening now because now I'm going on television and I know things that maybe the average wrestler didn't know before. It's kind of interesting because there's a, there's a really sort of, there's actually a, a really tiny overlap when it comes to reality stars and uh, WWE superstars. I mean, you're the only person that I can think of that's sort of done a similar thing to you has been The Miz, who was on The Real World all of those years ago. Mm -hmm. And you look at his career, he's the only guy that's ever been uh, a two-time WWE Grand Slam champion. So you're in some pretty good company if you're following down, down that yeah. path. Yeah, definitely. And it's funny because I am a huge reality and real world fan. So I watched The Miz when he was doing his thing on The Real World, and I was always like, that's so cool. And now I'm kind of living a, a similar life, heading down a similar path. And I was actually talking to... Uh, John Morrison today, oh, yeah. uh, who actually did Survivor as well. So we have that weird little connection where we've done the same show and kind of talked about our experiences. But usually when people do reality TV and they're a wrestler, the wrestling part is not their strong suit. But for me and for the Miz and, and, and you know, a few other guys, we can do both. So when did you actually realize that being a WWE superstar was something that you sort of really wanted to do? I mean, we've touched on your stint in Survivor and uh, you had a, a pretty much a real life civilian job back in the day as a teacher. But at what point do you sort of go, I don't know, put down the books and go, I'm going to start doing suplexes and bouncing off the ropes and try this uh, full time and go all in on wrestling? Yeah, well, it was always the dream since I was, you know, seven, eight years old, like a lot of people, but being from Australia you didn't really have that connection that it was possible to get there. You know, the, there was Nathan Jones early on, but other than him, there just wasn't that wrestler from Australia who'd made it. Um, and then I kind of noticed, you know, the Iconics and Buddy Murphy and some of these Aussie people that I'd seen independently on the big stage. And all of a sudden it's like, wow, that's possible. So I started training and my goals were just to do things in Australia realistically. Obviously I, the dream was always to get to the WWE, but the path was very difficult. And that's why I was a teacher full time. You know, I was wrestling on the side, trying to get it all together. But I think it was in maybe 
the last two years where I was wrestling in Australia, where I, I started to, to feel that I was on a level where I could progress. And all I needed was that opportunity for the right person to see me at the right time. And, and lucky for me, WWE was in town for a show that we did in Sydney. And like that, all of a sudden, the dream was a reality. It kind of came out of nowhere. Uh, so I think I got very lucky, but I worked very hard as well to make sure that when the opportunity was there, I was ready to take it. Well, I sort of say when it comes to luck, you know, luck is putting yourself in the right places, but you can't just be in the right place at the right time. You have to have the skills to sort of back that up. And and I know personally, I mean, I've seen you a handful of times uh, here in Melbourne when you've made the trip down to the Thornbury Theatre and uh, wrestled for our promotions down here. <laughs> that, uh, you know, the crowd goes absolutely wild for you. And it, it would be hard too, because, you know, you're based in Sydney, but you've wrestled around the country and different states here in Australia. I don't know if people uh, un- understand this, have sort of different vibes with them. And the fact that you can adapt here in Australia probably puts you at, a, at, a, at an advantage when you go overseas to the States. Definitely, because as, as performers and as, as entertainers, our job is to make sure that, the crowd enjoys themselves and whether that's them cheering me or booing me I can make both happen I can make you like me or make you hate me that's kind of the personality I have but I think that's one of my strong suits is I love connecting with an audience on whatever type of wavelength that is uh, so I th- I think luckily in Australia I had the opportunity to wrestle in front of lots of different crowds you know the Thornbury Theatre crowd in Melbourne who hate people from Sydney just because they're from Sydney and they're jealous which is understandable <laughs> is very different to my kind of homegrown Sydney crowd who kind of wanted to get behind me. So whether you love me or you hate me, at the end of the day, you're going to, you're going to have a good time. You're going to remember the match that I had that night. Oh, hundred percent. And I still remember being there in the theater that night when you were, you were facing a, Mel, uh, a Melbourne wrestler, an icon of, you know, our promotion here for one of our iconic championships here. And I just remember everyone in the crowd just sort of being like, if he walks away with that title and that championship and takes it up to Sydney, I think there's going to be a riot here. (laughs) It felt like that. And I loved every single second of it. And I really wish I could have taken that title back to Sydney and really thrown it in everyone's faces. But I, a lot of people don't enjoy being hated. I do. I think that that was one of my favorite nights in Australian wrestling because I, I just knew there was no one in that audience who wanted to see me win. It's pretty funny though, because like while, while we do have that rivalry here in Australia, when we do see someone be them, they could be from Adelaide, they could be from, you know, Sydney, from, from Brisbane, wherever, once they make it to the WWE, we sort of go all in on them. It's like, right. Okay. We got, we're part of the journey here, but um, you've spent the majority of your time in 205 live, which uh, since day one, He's been kind of one of the hidden gems of all the flavors I, I sort of, you kind of say of WWE, but you've, you've racked up a fair few wins on the program. I mean, you, you've been dominating the purple brand and this is, this is a brand that's been, you know, it's the launch pad for guys like say Cedric Alexander, uh, Kushida had a really great run there. Um, we've, we've seen, you know, Buddy Murphy, Australia's own and Melbourne's own, I should point out, had a stellar championship run there. Do you, do you sort of feel a sense of ownership of, uh, of the brand on 205 since, you know, you're part of the quote unquote new gen that's coming through it? 100%. Uh, I know there's a, there's a certain stigma on 205 just because it doesn't have the same eyes on it that NXT or Raw or SmackDown has. But for anyone who watches those shows, you're seeing the next guys up before they're on the show. So all the people who are going to start taking over NXT, Raw, SmackDown, I think a lot of them are starting in 205 and and, and showing what they can do. And I got the opportunity really, I was only in the PC for three months and then I was on TV, which is super rare. So just having the opportunity to jump on 205, a a brand I've seen so much on and like having Nigel McGuinness commentating my matches, (laughs) it was super cool thing being a huge Nigel McGuinness fan and getting us to wrestle every single week against a huge array and variety of talent. You know, I wrestled Odyssey Jones, who was this giant heavyweight. And then I wrestled, you know, Andre Chase, who's this technical master. I wrestled Jiro, who does a bit of everything. It's just a lot of fun getting to wrestle so many different types of styles and characters and kind of show what I can do as well, because not everyone can get on NXT. There's a lot of performers and there's only so much time. So getting to show out on 205 Live in front of that crowd who's there every week too, I love it. And at the moment, you know, there's a lot of new guys there. And in my head, I'm like, I run 205 now. <laughs> there's no one on that brand who, who, who's going to show out better than me. And if they want to, they can come test me and they'll find out real quick that that's not how it works. Like this, 
that's my house. Yeah, I'd, I'd fully agree with that. Like you, you sort of associate superstars with certain brands. And, and now I know I, I probably sound like a broken record here because the amount of times we talk about, you know, how Australians are doing great things in the WWE. And uh, another cool thing for you, I guess, would be a lot of the guys and girls in the company that you're in the ring with, you've actually shared the same locker rooms, not just in the WWE, but even back home in Australia as well. So does that make it a little bit easier settling in to such a foreign environment? Uh I got very lucky coming here that I came here at the same time as Persia Parada, formerly known as SDL. And it's a funny story because myself and her actually started training at the PWA Academy in Sydney on the same day. And then we started training at the PC on the same day, which is such a weird type of thing that, that happened. And because of COVID and things, we were supposed to start different times, but luckily we got to come together and it just makes life a little bit easier when you have someone else to kind of rely on. Indy Hartwell, is around who I'd met a bunch of times back in Australia, who I'm pretty close with now. Having her around, who's been here a little bit, knows how things run, she can kind of tell you. Uh, Big Duke Hudson uh, is around. I didn't meet him in Australia, uh, but I got to meet him here. He was no help at all, but like he's around, <laughs> which is a positive. <laughs> but even someone like, I think like Zion Quinn, uh, who I'd met briefly in Australia, but someone who's been here for a while, knows how things works can tell you, hey, this is what this happened, this is what happens. And all of a sudden you just have a little bit more comfort. And just hearing the accent and talking about things in Australia is just really nice, especially at the moment where I think homesickness hits pretty hard because we don't have the ability to go home. Yeah. We don't yeah. have the ability to have friends and family come over and visit us and experience what we're doing. So just having some Australians here is like we've got a little bit of home all the time, which is really nice. Yeah, just that sort of slice of home uh, back where you are now. But um, like I sort of said, um, as, as I probably, I've taken up so much of your time here, but um, it, it's been a short time that you have been in the WWE, but uh, the road ahead is pretty long and there's a whole heap for you to do. But what are some of the achievements that you want to tick off? I mean, you know, obviously things like WrestleMania, uh, maybe main event at WWE live show at uh, like Kudos Bank Arena. But what, what are some of the things that you want to do um, in your time in WWE? I've got a lot of goals that I've, I've written them all down and I'm slowly ticking them off. Uh, of course, you know, I, I envision myself main eventing WrestleMania one day. I think, I think I'm, I'm at the level where I can make that happen. But for right now, my two main goals is I'm, I want to win gold on NXT. There's this new NXT 2.0. They're trying to see who the future is. I think I'm the now, I'm ready to take it. So I think winning any type of gold, the Cruiserweight belt, North American, maybe the NXT belt, that will really cement me as being a top player on this new NXT. And then number two, similar to what you said, I would love to wrestle for the WWE brand in Australia. That, that's my absolute dream to, to go back and see the same fans who supported me for so long, but now I can kind of show my support for them by, by showing what they gave to me. So I don't know where, it, hopefully, you know, Kudos Bank Arena would be a beautiful place to be on that stage, a little bit better than some of the, you know, community centers that I wrestle in front of five people or the black town markets in front of no people. So getting that little step up and re wrestling at those big arenas, maybe even Rod Laver arena, I'll give Melbourne a shout out so they don't whinge on Twitter. Um, <laughs> that would, that would be amazing. I really want to kind of show what I can do in front of that Australian crowd again. Well, Grayson, man, we can't wait to see you back down. But for the time being, we're absolutely loving what you're doing on NXT 2.0. You can check him out every Wednesday morning from 11 a.m. Australian Eastern Daylight Savings Time on Fox Cells, Fox 8. Grayson, it's been an absolute pleasure to chat to you, man. Uh, before I let you go, i got to mention a shout out for uh, two people that you might know, uh, Chris Gale and Andrew Rose. Uh, they are very, very pleased <laughs> to see. Uh, I think they're your biggest supporters down here in Australia. And uh, I, can, I can tell you right now, a lot of people share their enthusiasm for seeing what you do. So uh, all the best, mate, and we'll uh, catch up soon, hopefully. I appreciate that. I'm really glad to hear, you know, Chris is pulling for me. Couldn't care less about Rose. You don't have to mention him again. <laughs> Thanks a lot, brother. Appreciate it. Thanks, Nimi.